para mi gente Con una pasión Con una pasión tan fuerte Hi folks, and welcome back to the first in a set of slightly different videos. We'll all be facing some challenging and uncertain times ahead, but I'm confident that if we all stick together and we heed the advice that's being given by our governments, then we will, we will beat this thing. Which is why the next few videos will be filmed from home. This video is in response to questions I had in the comments on my last video. The two-part walk I did on the uh, Norfolk Coast Path before we were rudely interrupted by the coronavirus. Those questions were mainly about gear. So I thought I would take you through all the gear I took with me on the walk and um, hopefully that'll answer some of those questions. Everything I took with me on that trip fitted in this bag here. This is a Deuter 38 litre rucksack. It's a Futura pack. I'm not sure whether this is still in production. This is an old bag but this thing was brilliant. Everything fitted in here with the exception of the things I was actually wearing and it's a really, really comfortable backpack. It uses this air comfort back system here where you have a, a tight mesh um, back support here and there's a gap behind it. All goes all the way through. So the, the rucksack itself is never touching your back. You've just got this mesh area and obviously that's breathable because it's full of holes. It keeps you cooler, it keeps you more comfortable. It's got one main compartment and a smaller compartment at the bottom designed for your sleeping bag or your sleep system. Um, I'll show you in a minute, but I managed to fit everything in here to do with sleeping. So my sleeping bag, tarp, my sleeping mat, everything is in that section there and everything else went in the top. There are two mesh pockets on the side, which are ideal for water bottles. I've got a nesting cup, so the cup sits underneath my water bottle on that side. That side just has a water bottle. Above each mesh pocket and behind these compression straps are two other pockets. These ones expand, so if you're not using them, they just sort of stay flat against your pack and don't get in the way. It has a nice system for carrying walking poles, where each pole has its own dedicated little loop at the bottom. Because it's a small loop, it stops the poles from slipping through. And on the front of the pack, up the top here, you've got one small pocket here. And um, that's ideal for, you know, keys, wallet, or anything you might need to get to easily. And there's also a fairly generous external lid pocket as well. And finally, underneath and behind the lid is an exit port for a hydration bladder. I took one with me and it was really handy. There's a little tidy on the shoulder strap with a Velcro tab so you can just keep it in place so you haven't got to fumble around and find it. Total weight for the rucksack including all of the contents and full water bottles. So that's four litres of water with 17 kilograms. I'm pretty happy with how little I got that down to. Most of the kit I've got is fairly lightweight. You know, one or two things weighed a bit more, but yeah, 17 kilograms, I think is pretty good. We'll start with the lid pocket. In here, I just had smaller items that I wanted to keep together. Um, you know, bits I didn't want to lose in the bottom of my rucksack. So my cup went in there just because it's a small item. I took some hand warmers, not for my hands, but um, I like to put these in my sleeping bag at night just to pre-warm my sleeping bag before I get in. And that's what I did. I just chucked a couple in about an hour before I went to bed and um, my sleeping bag was nice and warm. Also in the top here, I've got my Tranja burner. This is a, an alcohol stove or a methylated spirits burner. And um, yeah, it's, it's great. I'm sure you've seen these before. You fill this up with methylated spirits and uh, it burns with a nice hot blue flame. There's lots of little jets around the outside so the, the flame blooms and um, it heats water and cooks 
really efficiently. This is made from brass. There are lighter weight alternatives made from titanium available. So if you are uh, a gram counter, then um, you know that might be something worth considering, but I really like the Trenger burner. Also in the top, I have a small pouch here for my camera SD cards. Um, you know, that needs to be somewhere easily accessible because SD cards always seem to run out at the worst moment. So being able to change my SD card quickly is good. And finally, I've got this pouch here. I'm just gonna call this my possibles pouch. This is one of the small Maxpedition organizer pouches. I really like these because inside everything is organized. There's elasticated loops, there's little compartments, and when you open it up, rather than spending ages trying to find something or rummaging around the bottom of your bag, trying to find a piece of equipment that you need quickly, you might want to light your stove, you might just want a torch, you might, you know, you might just need something when you get to camp, you're tired, you've been walking all day long, and you can open this thing up and everything is there, organized, and you can find whatever it is you need. So in here, I have my torch. This is a head torch by Olight. It's the H1R Nova. Um, you'll have seen me use this on videos before. I love this thing. This was sent to me by um, Olight ages ago to, to kind of test and try out. And <laughs> since I've had it, I've not used any of my other torches. And I'm not just saying that because they sent it to me. It, it genuinely is really good. It's rechargeable and it lasts ages. I also took this little lamp here, this little Lumo lamp. Um, it's a good little reading lamp. And um, I just hung this up by my tarp at night um, in the evening and it just gave off a bit of a bit of light, it was just nice. This is the knife I took with me. This is a Sword Peasant. It's a, a New Zealand made knife and um, it is a UK legal carry. It's non-locking and, um, and the blade is under a certain size so you can, you can legally carry it, which is obviously important as I was walking in places where there are other human beings. You know, I can't just be taking a great big sheath knife with me <laughs> like I'd have in camp. Um, you know, if I got caught, there would be <clears throat> serious questions asked. Also on this side of the pouch is a lighter. This isn't actually the one I took with me. I can't find the one I took, but um, you know, I know it's not very bushcraft, but I wasn't bushcrafting, I was backpacking. So I took this for lighting my stove. You know, it's just easier. I did take a ferro rod as well as backup. I can light a mess burner with a ferro rod, even if it's wet. Also in here, I have a small repair kit. So I've got safety pins, I've got needle and thread. I've got some tenacious tape, which will repair waterproof outdoor uh, clothing and things. Um, I've got some duct tape wrapped around there and I've got some bicycle inner tube. I've also got a split ring or two in there as well, because they're quite handy for repairs. And then tucked down the back here, I've got some basic first aid items. Um, I've got some burn gel. You know, I'm using a stove, stoves are hot, there is a chance of a burn injury. I've got some plaster and I've got a couple of gauze swabs. This thing here is a Victorinox Swiss card. It has a few really useful items in. It's worth taking just for the scissors. These are really useful for cutting up plasters or well, cutting up anything else really. Um, the tweezers, I also find really useful. I'm forever getting things in my eye or splinters, and obviously they're great for removing those. Other things I've got in here is a, a marker pen and a pencil. I've got a small hank of cordage here, and I have a spare spoon, just in case I um, lose my other one. Finally, down the back here, I've got some pocket tissues, which I use for toilet roll, and a tin opener. I didn't take any tins with me, but that's always on there, to be honest. Walking poles. I took these with me for two reasons. Firstly, I was concerned about a knee injury I had at the end of last year, and to be honest, my knees flare up and give me a bit of jip now and again anyway, and walking poles really help. So I took them with me in case I needed to use them. Thankfully, my knee was all right, um, but you know, they were there just in case. I did, however, use them as part of my shelter setup though. These came in as poles to support my tarp shelter. If you invert them and put the tie out point of your tarp over the spike, then the basket here stops it from sliding down and holds it in place. Works really well. In the mesh pocket on this side, I've got a one litre water bottle. So that was one of my four litres that just lived in there. And then in the expanding side pocket, I've got a buff. And then also in here, I've got a pair of gloves. These are seal skins gloves. They're waterproof and they've got um, a leather palm. So they're ideal for picking up hot things. On the other side, I've got my second water bottle. This also holds a litre. This is a stainless steel bottle, this one, so I can use it for, for boiling water if necessary. So that was my second water bottle. And nesting with that, 
is a 750 milliliter stainless steel cup, which I used as my cooking pot. That's perfect for solo use. You don't really need much more than that. That'll boil enough water for a dehydrated meal and enough for a hot drink as well in one go. You know, it's, it's ideal for, for single person use. You don't need to take a big pan with you. Um, you know, one of these with a lid is perfect. And in the other zipped pocket was my spare map. There were two maps that covered the section of walk I did um, during this leg. So whichever one I wasn't using just lived in there. Underneath the lid is another zipped pocket. And in here I tend to keep flat items. So I've got my spoon, which is reasonably flat and I don't want to lose it. So I know, I know it's always in there. It's just a long handled anodized aluminium sea to summit spoon. I get asked quite a bit about what these are and it is shaped like that when you buy them. And it's so that you can get into the bottom of pouch meals and get the last bits out of the bottom. I really like this spoon. Um, I've had it quite a long time. In fact, this is my second one. I lost the first one. Um, thus the spare <laughs> in my possibles pouch. I've also got my stove in here. This is a Firebox Nano. It's, it's titanium, it doesn't weigh very much at all. It's actually a wood burning stove, but um, I took this with me because it works really well as a, as a stand for my Trangia burner. And it's obviously got a pot support built into it already. Um, the bonus as well, obviously, is if I did come across any wood, which was unlikely on this walk because it was mostly salt marsh and beach walking. Um, but if I did, I could have picked it up if there was any driftwood or anything like that I could have I could have picked it up and and burnt some wood in it as well I also took a windshield for the stove now I know the spirit burner is already inside the firebox but even in there the wind blows the flame about all over the place so if you can rig up some sort of windbreak as well it makes all the difference you can use your rucksack or whatever if you want but this thing is so light and folds flat you know it was definitely worth taking that was worth every ounce I tell you that beach was really windy and finally I've got the lid for my Pathfinder cup right main compartment this contains camera related gear so in here I've got a lens cloth I've got batteries I've got chargers I've got charger cables and one for my head torch and I've got a power bank here. I wanted to be able to keep my phone topped up and charge batteries if need be. Not really related to the walk as such, but just to filming. Also related to filming is a video light for nighttime, uh, for nighttime filming. Next out of the bag is a reading book and my reading glasses. I like to have a book with me in camp. I like reading anyway. Um, you know, it's, it's my way of kind of unwinding at the end of the day and the evenings are long this time of year. Uh, you know, we're in, we're in winter and um, the sun sets early and those evenings can really drag on if you haven't got anything to do. So a good book, and this is a really good book, Ernest Shackleton's South and my reading glasses. Next out is my insulated jacket. I was really thankful for this when I was on that beach. It got very cold in the evening. The wind was cutting across that beach and it was just, it just penetrated through you. Um, I had a fleece on and I had a warm uh, woolen base layer, but you know, the wind just goes, goes straight through that. So you need something to block the wind. Having an insulated coat makes a huge amount of difference. Plus if you've got one like mine that folds away into its own pocket, you've got a ready-made pillow and you can also use it as a cozy to put your dehydrated meal in while it rehydrates. You can pop it in there, you can zip it back up again and it keeps it nice and warm while it rehydrates. I didn't use it for either of those two uses though because I was wearing it. This is a Montane Prism jacket and although it's not very thick, it is really, really warm. It's Pertex, which is windproof and really breathable, very fast drying, and it's got a Primal Off filling. Really warm, really comfortable. In here, I've got a cheap German Army ground sheet it's just like a personal sized one just big enough for you to sleep on basically um, just made from plastic doesn't weigh very much I just wanted some form of protection underneath my bivy bag and underneath my my sleeping pad waterproof trousers or rain pants 
I've got a pair of Montaigne waterproof trousers here um, using Event uh, waterproofing, which is very waterproof, super breathable, and um, yeah, they're great. They're, they're very light, they pack up small, and um, they've got lots of nice features that I like. Full length side zips, so you can get them on and off really easily, and they open at the top as well for ventilation. They are reinforced on the bum area, the knees, and at the bottom where your legs rub together. Waterproof top that I took, you'll have seen this on loads of videos. This is a Paramo Velez Adventure Light top. Um, it's, yeah, it's really good. It works on a different system to the membrane, like the waterproof trousers. The outer fabric isn't waterproof as such, it's water resistant, but it allows moisture in, and then there's a lining on the inside which acts as a pump and pumps moisture back out again. So it deals with it that way, it's, it's different, but it works. In here, I've also got my fuel. So I took this, it's a 700 milliliter bottle of methylated spirits. Um, I didn't need to take this much, but um, I had the space to carry it, and I knew I was gonna be relying on meths for all of my cooking, so I didn't wanna be short. Um, I took this so there was, you know, I could have as many hot drinks as I wanted without worrying about it. This is my food bag, and obviously I've eaten the food that I took with me on the walk, but with the exception of lunch on the first day, which was a wrap I prepared at home that morning, I mostly took dehydrated meals with me. I like dehydrated meals, they're lightweight. I can refill my water bottles en route, so I haven't got to take the extra, carry that extra water with me the whole time. And um, I just find them good, they work for me. I, they're, they're tasty, they're filling, they're crammed full of calories, and they're ideal as a backpacker's food. The dehydrated meals consisted of a dinner for that first night, that was a mountain house meal, a chicken and dumplings, which was a little bit on the bland side, but I did take some PCF hot sauce with me to zing it up a little bit, and that was good. Breakfast and lunch on the second day were Norwegian freeze-dried meals by the company Real Termat. I had a chocolate muesli for breakfast, which was perfect, you know, it was obviously full of oats and, and other nice goodies and tasty. That kept me going all morning, and then for lunch I had a reindeer soup, which was absolutely delicious. It was almost like a stew, really. Um, really good filling, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I just want to say a huge thank you to Martin from Vildemark UK, who sent me those to try out. Really good, thank you. In addition to the meals, I also took snacks with me. I had some beef jerky and I had trail bars and things like that. And drinks wise, aside from water, I had coffee and hot chocolate. Stuffed down the back of my rucksack, I've got my pegs. Um, these are a, a sand and snow peg. I knew I was gonna be camping on the beach, so I needed something that wasn't gonna just pull out of the ground, and these were perfect. I didn't have to adjust them, I didn't have to push them back in the ground, they held. They weren't expensive, I got these on Amazon. Definitely worth it if you're gonna be uh, camping on a, on a beach or in sand or, or loose ground pegs. Also down the back here, I have my sit mat. This is just a trusty old multi-mat one I've had for years. It's got burn holes in it and all sorts. It's been through hell, this thing. But um, it's really useful just to have a for sitting on when you stop for breaks during the day. But um, if I'm tarp camping with my bivy bag, um, I like to just keep it near the head of my bivy bag so I've got something to stand on as I'm getting in and out. And then the last thing down the back here is my hydration bladder. This is a two liter Camelback. The bonus about these is that they're soft. So as you drink the fluid out of them, they become smaller and smaller, taking up less space, and you haven't got a great big empty bottle to carry around with you. And finally, we've got this compartment here. Like I said earlier, this is my sleeping and kind of nighttime gear, with the exception of my ground sheet, which went in the top part of the, the rucksack. So first out, I've got this bottle here. This is a collapsible Nalgene bottle, and um, it's a little bit gross, but that is my pee bottle. <laughs> um, you know, Getting in and out of a bivy bag is not the easiest thing, and if you need a pee in the middle of the night, it's a real hassle having to get up, get your boots on, get out, and um, then you know repeat it all as you get back in again. So I tend to use a pee bottle. Um, I can relieve myself from the comfort of my sleeping bag and bivy bag without having to get out. Next thing out is my sleeping pad. This is a Thermarest Neowear X-Therm. You know, they are expensive. Um, you know, there's no getting away from that, they are. But they are really, really comfortable and they're very thermally efficient. For as long as this remains serviceable, I, d I can't see myself ever going back to any of my other 
mattresses that I've had in the past. The thing is just so good. My bivy bag. This is a Rab Ascent bivy. It's a top loader um, and it was ideal. This is the lightest one I own, which is why I took it and um, it was absolutely spot on. This bivy bag uses event waterproof breathable fabric. There was absolutely no condensation whatsoever overnight. The inside of the bivy bag was bone dry. I sleep with it open or at least a bit open to allow for a bit of ventilation and to allow your breath uh, to get out most importantly. That's usually the cause of condensation in, in bivy bags is, is moisture from your own breath. So if you can keep your mouth near an opening, uh, it's gonna be a lot better. Next now is my tarp. This is a Terranova Competition One tarp. It's a super lightweight, 195 grams or seven ounces. Um, folds down to next to nothing. You know, if that's compressed down, that is tiny. It's not the biggest tarp in the world, but it's plenty big enough for um, one person to use as I did, as a shelter to use with a bivy bag. When that wind was whipping around, through the night, I was a little bit concerned about how well it would hold up to it. There was no damage to it whatsoever, despite the buffeting, and it really was acting like a sail and, and blown around all over the place, but it's good. Yeah, all the stitching held. Really, really good tarp. And last now is my sleeping bag. This is a Mountain Hardware Lamina 35. It's a synthetic mummy-shaped sleeping bag and it's good down to just above zero degrees. I tend to use this now for three season use in the UK and it's been absolutely fine. I've had this down well below freezing and it's been warm enough. It's got good insulation in it that lofts up well, it packs down small, it's relatively light, really good bag. So that's the stuff I had in my bag, but on my person, I wore a pair of Fjallraven Vida Pro trousers. These are the, the newer ventilated version. They have ventilated side openings, so you can open them up a bit if you get too hot. They also have a ventilated stretch panel in the gusset, which makes them a lot more comfortable than the older ones. On my top half next to my skin, I had a woolen base layer. This is a wool power 200 gram base layer. Unlike a lot of merino base layers, the inside is toweled, so it's much more comfortable next to your skin, less itchy and traps more air so is therefore warmer. Over that while I was walking I wore my good old trusty Rab Shadow hoodie. Um, I've had this thing for years and it just keeps going and going. It's a kind of almost like a soft shell uh, wind stopper fleece. It's not very thick but because the outside is quite tightly woven it does block a lot of that um, wind and therefore keeps you warmer. On my head I had the hat that I've got on now. This is a woolen buffy hat really comfortable. On my feet I had these Keen hiking boots, they've, they've got a waterproof lining in them, really quite nice and light, and a pair of Lorpin wool mix socks, which uh, I really like. The shoes were great, um, you know, after the walk my feet were generally really comfortable, with the exception of an area across the top of my left foot, but that was purely down to me over tightening this boot when I started, and I did some damage to the top of my foot. I'm not sure what damage I've done, um, it's still a little bit tender now, and we're sort of like two weeks down the line. That wasn't a fault of the boot, it was a fault of the user. We're nearly there, just a few more items that I had about my person. Firstly, my GoPro um, action camera. This is the GoPro Hero 7, black edition. Um, and this I had on its little bra, so I could have it strapped to my chest. That was obviously for filming all of my kind of forward facing shots during the walk of uh, sort of what I saw as I was walking along. Tucked under the shoulder strap of my rucksack, I carried whichever map I was using for that day in a waterproof map case so that it was easily accessible whenever I needed it. I could just pull it out, have a look at it, slide it back again, um, and it was just there. In my trousers pocket, I carried a guidebook. This is a Cicerone guide to the Pedersway and the Norfolk Coastal Footpath. This is actually an older edition this one only covers the route as far as Cromer. As I said in the video, the route has been extended now to Hopton-on-Sea, so the newer edition covers the whole length of that route. So if you're planning on doing the walk, I strongly urge you to get a copy of this. It's a really good book. For filming, I used the Canon 700D DSLR with a Rode video mic, and that sat on my tripod, which I carried in my hand for the whole walk, until an unfortunate incident involving the North Sea meant I had to switch to my phone. Quite a few of you had asked how the camera fared after its first swimming lesson. Um, not very well is the answer. Uh, it was pretty terminal. Uh, I, I got it home and I dried it out. I put it in rice for a few days to try and draw any moisture out, but 
Um, the problem is, you know, you can take all the moisture out, but the salt residue is left behind, and I think that's probably all over the circuit boards and, and all the rest of it. There's a lot inside a DSLR potentially to go wrong. I will send it off for repair once things get back to normal, but in the meantime, I had to bite the bullet and buy a replacement. I managed to find a decent second-hand camera body on eBay, so that's what I'm filming on now. So that is all the gear I took with me on this walk. Now, if I was doing the walk at a different time of year, there'd obviously be different bits of kit, some things I wouldn't take, other things that I would. And, uh, you know, over time, you replace things, you buy different things, and, um, you know, your kit does tend to evolve and change over time. But I'm pretty happy with all the gear I took with me on this trip. Everything performed as it should. It was reasonably lightweight. I was thrilled to have got all my kit down to 17 kilograms. I don't think that's too bad for two days kit, food and water. Stay safe, keep well, and I'll see you soon.